And Mr. Mike Davis joins us now. Mike, you've actually been sitting in the courtroom, right? So give us, what's your takeaways? Well, it, this is the freshman version of the January 6th committee here in Denver, Colorado. You have this left-wing group crew uh, funding these plaintiffs, uh, these, these fake Republicans in Colorado who haven't been Republicans in many years, and they filed this uh, <laughs> frivolous legal lawsuit in Colorado with this clearly biased judge, as you pointed out. She donated to an anti-Trump January 6th pack. And now this week, she's sitting on a trial to throw Trump out of office based upon January 6th. There is a clear judicial bias. She said, hey, don't worry, I made that donation, but I can be fair. That's not the legal standard. Her subjective uh, belief she could be fair is not the legal standard objectively. It's the, what does the public believe? And the public would clearly not believe she could be fair if she donated to an anti-Trump January 6th group just a year ago. And now she's sitting on the the anti-Trump January 6th trial. So there's that. And then they just called in a witness, an expert, a so-called witness today, uh, this Peter Semi, who got his PhD in Las Vegas. Uh, he's a sociologist. And he is essentially arguing that when Trump says peaceful, uh, it's bad. When Democrats say peaceful, it's, it's good. When Trump says fight, it's bad. When Democrats they fight, it's good. This is a clown car here in Denver, Colorado. Unfortunately, I think the Democrats are going to win with this clearly biased judge. They're going to throw Trump off the ballot in Colorado. Then it goes to the Colorado Supreme Court, which is stacked by left-wing activists because Republicans haven't won in Colorado in a long time. They'll probably affirm this biased judge's decision to throw Trump off the ballot in Colorado. And then you're going to see Democrats take this bad unconstitutional legal precedent on the road. They're going to take it to places like Minnesota and Michigan and other swing states to try to tr take Trump off the ballot. They, the Democrats are so fearful that their two impeachments for nonsense and their four indictments for non-crimes and their civil fraud claim to bankrupt his family and business for the non-fraud of paying back sophisticated Wall Street banks in full on time as agreed with interest. That's all backfire. President Trump is leading President Biden. He's going to beat him like a drum on November, November 5th, 2024. So this January 6th insurrection disqualification nonsense is the Democrats' legal Hail Mary. If you can't beat them, just take them off the ballot. Uh, you mentioned that one expert uh, witness from Las Vegas who is clearly Biden aligned. I, I mean, we joke, expert makes me laugh. But there's also been Democrat Congressman Eric Swalwell who has taken the stand, who, I mean, obviously his credibility is impeccable, right? And then that also we saw uh, former Capitol Police Daniel Hodges, I believe is his name, Hodges has testified before the January 6th committee in the sentencing of j6 defendants as well and he's a regular feature on cnn where he says things like this listen ultimate accountability would be cultural um how the name donald trump would be held and discussed by americans um but you know officer hodges has already been caught lying in court pretending not to know one of his fellow capitol police officers at one point which was pointed out on cross-examination and he had admit that he knew her her name was lila morris and she was related to rose boylan's death um so this is what we're seeing in this courtroom how are how are is the defense dealing with this it sounds like they went judge shopping this sounds like banana republic courtroom to me from what you're telling me but how is the defense dealing with all of this well the president trump's legal team is doing a very good job of just very methodically laying out the facts laying out the law cross-examining these goofball performance artists who the democrats are bringing in to testify look as we've said for a long time, what happened on January 6th was a lawful protest permitted by the National Park Service that got out of control and devolved into a riot. It was not an insurrection. The Democrats have spent tens of millions of dollars through the January 6th committee and the Biden Justice Department and Jack Smith looking for evidence of insurrection. It does not exist because if it existed, they would have charged President Trump with insurrection by now. So it doesn't exist. And so 
What they're trying to do is have their freshman team here out in Denver, Colorado, try to get this biased Democrat judge uh, using this this goofball uh, expert witness from Vegas to say that when President Trump said peaceful, he actually meant insurrection. And so you're going to have this judge find that there was an insurrection, disqualify him from the Colorado ballots, President Trump from the Colorado ballots, and then they're going to take that on the road. They're going to take it on the road. There will be an appeal. I, I want to ask you about the timeline, because if she does give her decision by by Thanksgiving, she's saying that would leave time for appeals, but it also leaves room for Colorado to go ahead and, according to her decision, print the ballots. Then you'd have to get the appeals process done. I mean, will the appeals process, it could be appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court, I guess, in theory, Right. They could already have these ballots printed. There could be chaos that ensues after that. So how do you see this going after it leaves just Wallace's courtroom? So after this biased Denver District Court, Democrat Judge Sarah Wallace rules for the Democrats and tries to take Trump off the ballot. This is an election challenge under Colorado law, so it's immediately appealable on an expedited basis to the Colorado Supreme Court. I have no confidence in the Colorado Supreme Court uh, doing the right thing here. So this will they'll rule against Trump and then the Supreme Court has discretionary review. They can decide whether they take this case or not. The Supreme Court will have to take this case because this is so much bigger than Donald Trump. These lifetime appointed pay protected judges, justices on the Supreme Court are going to have to put on their big boy pants and they're going to have to take a Trump case and they're going to have to follow the Constitution, including Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which is not self-executing. The only way you can disqualify a federal candidate, including someone running for the presidency of the United States, is through a federal criminal statute, which Congress passed in 1870. There's an insurrection or rebellion statute that was passed after an 1869 court decision by then Chief Justice, Justice Samuel Chase that made it very clear if you want to disqualify, it has to, Congress has to pass a federal criminal statute. You have to bring federal charges by a, a U.S. attorney in federal court. You have to have a federal jury uh, find the, uh, the, the, the candidates or the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The judge has to convict. convict it has to be affirmed uh, on appeal. And then you can disqualify under that federal criminal statute. That's the only way you can do it. You can't have your partisan secretaries of state or your partisan attorneys or your partisan state judges do this. That is a clown car. That is a banana republic. That, and we're seeing that right here in Denver, Colorado. We're seeing a lot of Banana Republic these days, so I guess the main question that I'll ask you, and then I, I want to hit another topic real quickly before we lose our time with you, is are we facing an actual reality where the front runner for the Republican Party, who is a former president, will be left off the ballot for voters? They won't have the option to mark his name. Is that a real possibility of happening? That is... That is a very real possibility. I've been warning about this for 14 months uh, since this lawfare, 15 months since this lawfare started uh, in Mar-a-Lago. This is Democrat lawfare. They fear that President Trump is going to beat President Biden. The polling shows that that's going to happen. So they are just trying to indict him. They're trying to bankrupt him. That didn't work. So now they're just trying to take him off the ballot. Nothing screams democracy, according to these Democrats, like indicting bankrupting, putting in prison for 700 years, and just taking your political opponent off the ballot. And again, chaos would ensue. Uh, before we want to run out of time, I want to get to something that broke yesterday. This related to President Joe Biden. Uh, it has been revealed that there are even more emails that Joe Biden used a pseudonym email accounts uh, with three different pseudonyms while serving as President Barack Obama's vice president. Uh, this was uncovered during a lawsuit filed by a foundation to get access to these emails. NARA, which is the National Archives, has identified approximately 82,000 more pages of potentially responsive documents, and it is currently processing those. Um, look, we keep finding about thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and more. This probably even surpasses, at this point, the Hillary Clinton e uh, server scandal, right, and her email scandal. And now they're kind of producing stuff. So are they getting rid of Joe Biden? Will he face any repercussions 
for this? Well, there is no question that the president of the United States has compromised by tens of billions of dollars in foreign bribes and other corruption to what seems like every Biden family member, except for the five-year-old granddaughter who they refused to acknowledge for five years. Uh, this uh, has deadly consequences for the United States. Uh, there is no chance that we, we had we had four years of peace and prosperity under President Trump. We have war and chaos under President Biden because our enemies know that the president is corrupt. They know he's compromised. They know, they know that. They're taking advantage of this. They know this in Ukraine. Russia would not have invaded Ukraine if Russia didn't know that President Biden was on the take in Ukraine as the vice president of the United States. And that's going to spill over to China invading Taiwan, and it's already spilling over to turmoil, chaos, the worst terrorism, terrorism imaginable in Israel. You might have Iran attacking Israel more directly instead of through their their front groups, Hezbollah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's going to get ugly under President Biden. And Democrats need to make the decision whether they want to stick with this guy who's going to lose or throw him overboard and get stuck with Kamala Harris. They're between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, or if they draft in Gavin Newsom, it uh, seems like that's a possibility as well. Look, they're obviously weighing their options or we wouldn't be seeing as much uh, information as we are lately. Thank you much, so much for uh, joining us, Mike Davis. It's great to have you come give us what you're seeing firsthand in that courtroom. And as you said, you've been warning about this for a long time. So unfortunately, you've been vindicated. Thank you so much, Mike. It's good to see you.